Martin. I'm Roland Martin. Today on News One Now, Ferguson October is in full swing as protesters take on the police, the NFL, and Walmart as a showdown leads to several arrests. Do millennials need to take the baton in the fight for social justice, or does everyone of every age need to show up? We'll break that down as well. Common Core Education Standards has its friend and foes. We'll talk about this issue both sides, including talking with National Urban League CEO Mark Moriel. All that more coming up right now on News One Now. Ferguson October, folks. Uh, that's what folks have been focused on. You've seen the hashtag on Twitter. Uh, yesterday, several protests took place all over the city, including a march through the streets of Ferguson, where Michael Brown, an unarmed black teenager, was shot to death by a white police officer more than two months ago. There were a number of protests over the course of 16 hours yesterday uh, involving young activists, involving clergy, involving a number of people. In addition, there were protests last night uh, at the uh, St. Louis uh, Rams game against against the San Francisco 49ers. And so uh, it was a day of action, but not just in Ferguson. Also, there were protests taking place uh, in Ohio where John Crawford was shot and killed by police uh, in a Beaver Creek, Ohio Walmart. Joining us right now, one of the folks uh, who was arrested yesterday in Ferguson, Pastor Jamal Bryant out of Baltimore, the Empowerment Temple in Baltimore. Later on the show, we'll be joined by Dr. Cornell West, uh, who also uh, was there as well and was arrested. My panel, Lauren Victoria Burke, Managing Editor of Politic365.com, Cleo Monago, Behavioral Health Expert and CEO of the Black Men's Exchange National, and Kim Brown, host of the Kim Brown Radio Show. And Pastor Brown, I want to go to you first. Um, this Ferguson October initiative, again, it was a series of protests, uh, not just uh, protests at night, daytime protests as well. You had uh, pastors who were um, calling on the police to confess their sins of police brutality. Explain that. It was an incredible weekend, not even just a day, uh, but people came literally from around the country. We have what you've been calling for, not a moment, but a movement uh, of all different levels, all different capacities. We had to do, uh, first things first, Roland, is the church, uh, pastors came from all different reformations, one, uh, to repent for the church not being on the front line and being more visible and more vocal in these 65 days. We then marched uh, to uh, police Ferguson's, uh, Ferguson Police Headquarters and asked the police to repent uh, for their hand and participa participation uh, in a broken system. Uh, after that, uh, we asked to see uh, the chief of police, and that's when we moved forward, uh, and it led to our arrest. But I, I really want to commend uh, the grassroots ref efforts that are taking place in Ferguson that's not under the banner of any of our traditional motifs, uh, but really a call for justice, for change, uh, and for a movement to take place. I'm trying to understand here, you had some people who were saying this is a waste of time, but also one of the issues uh, in terms of what they're charging you with, you were charged with a assaulting police and disturbing the peace? Yes, which is a very serious, uh, very serious I, crime. How are you charged with assaulting police? I, I have no idea. Our lawyers are, are, are coming in. We were blown away when we saw it. Uh, disturbing the peace, we could understand. But uh, assaulting a police officer uh, is really a, a serious charge. And I think that they're trying to send a message. But the question is, if you felt that way in terms of clergy, most of them, as you saw in the footage, are dressed in their uh, regalia uh, as a threat how then much further would you charge our young people? And so it really sent a red flag for us to say that this is really a battleground. What's also happening, I talked to several different lawyers, they are charging uh, an exorbitant amount of money for folks to get bailed out. So in essence, uh, Ferguson is trying to, some say, bankrupt the movement, if you will. Uh, some folks being bailed out $1,000, $2,000. Well, let me tell you what they did preemptively trying to deal with uh, this in mass that happened at the Walmart. Two Walmarts were shut down. Monday night football is disturbed. So what they did is they processed us, kept us for four to five hours, and then said, we'll mail you your charge. Uh, so uh, nobody 
everybody had to pay the bail going out. Number one, they were fearful that we were just going to stack all of the jails, so they were trying to process us as quickly as possible. But what is very clear for the 21st century, this is our Selma. Uh, this is going to be the birthplace of where the next level of civil rights takes place is going to be Ferguson. And if anybody had any question, it ought to now be erased. There has not been for my generation a sustainable movement for 65 days. Whether you deal with uh, the Jenna 6 issue, whether you deal with Trayvon Martin, we had events, but a movement in one place, this is the first of its kind. I want to go to our panel here, uh, you all, but you can uh, put in there uh, what took place more Monday of the last uh, 70 some amount of weeks in North Carolina where, they, where they've had that as well. Uh, and in, in this case here, you also had the linkage between what took place uh, in Ferguson, between what took place in Ohio, and where John Crawford was shot and killed as well. That's one of the reasons why the protests were at the Walmart in Missouri, to link them with the with protests happening in Ohio. Your thoughts? Well, the, the, the linkage between uh, Moral Mondays and Jenna 6 is interesting because we did see a huge groundswell around those events as well. And also Trayvon Martin with regard to the huge march the NAACP put on about two weeks before before Zimmerman was indicted. But the point is, what I'm wondering about is, does this really lead to systemic change, or is this something where it's another round of events, a round of protests, a round of panels, a round of talk, and then nothing really comes from it? So, you know, I want to know what, what where does this lead in terms of real action and real change? I, I think it's really going to open up a larger national conversation yeah. on the prison pipeline, the inequity of treatment. We've been hearing a charge and chant, Black Lives Matter, yeah. uh, that we are, in fact, have to have some accountability for when our black children are killed and left in the street, uncovered, nobody checked uh, for vital signs, nobody called the ambulance, neighbors had to come and cover the body. Yeah, and that's we really what steeped it over the top. Even though this event is interesting in terms of it being unprecedented regarding long this this much for focus, it's it's also in light of these other incidences. I mean, people are tired. When I'm I'm a do Sean Bell, uh, we can go on and on. People are, are are tired, and I think that was symbolic to see that that young man in the street dead like that. And these young people are tired. So even though this looks particularly special because it's gone so long, it's they're, they're all connected, and they've been watching black male bodies pile up for a long, long time. And I think they're I think they're all connected, and I think that it's important that the the legacy leaders, I think they should be respected, and we should talk about respecting our elders. That needs to occur. But I also we need to look at the fact that, for far as they're concerned, there's been no leadership because nothing has stopped the murders before. And they're piling up, and people are tired of it, and they, don't, and they don't trust the legacy leaders anymore. I mean, there is still black elected leadership in St. Louis, and actually pretty much across the country in these areas where we're seeing uh, some of these murders of these unarmed people uh, occur. But the outcomes that we're searching for have to be more so than just getting people out to the polls because you can't legislate away racism you can't vote away racism but it is about getting people in place that will hold the police uh, the chief of police accountable the governor accountable etc but when we talk about just preventing these types of murders from happening period is something that i believe that these millennial activists are searching for first and foremost hold tight one second i gotta go to a break right now i'm going to pick up on that when we come back and also we'll deal with this whole this notion of a young versus old elders versus millennials uh, i make the point uh, it has to be all hands on deck not just young hands and old hands we'll break that down when we come back eight after the hour right here on news one now on tv one Welcome back to News One Now, right here on TV One. We're talking about uh, what's happening in Ferguson with the Ferguson October uh, protest that took place uh, all over uh, the city on yesterday. Plus, in St. Louis, we're joined by Pastor Jamal Bryant, plus uh, our panel uh, as well, Lawn Victoria Burke, Cleo Monago, as well as Kim Brown. And what's interesting about what we have seen, what we have seen over the last um, several months, really since this thing started. Uh, it was interesting listening to people who, who would say uh, that, look, we need old folks step aside, young folks lead, uh, and then you had elders who were saying, well, no, wait a minute, we have a role to play. And this is the thing that I've also made clear. Eric Garner was 43 years old. Now, Mike Brown was 18. 18. Eric Garner was 43. Uh, we had Ernest, we had the attorney yesterday of Ernest Satterwhite on the show. Black man shot and killed in his driveway. Uh, by a police officer who was indicted. Ernest Sandoval was 68. 
So this idea of black men being killed, it's not just black men who are 18, who are 20, who are 21. It's individuals who are in their 30s, in their 40s, in their 60s. And, and I believe we make a mistake when we want to push wisdom, knowledge, and people who want to be in the fight aside. I believe it's a, this is a dual deal. We, this is an all hands on deck. It can't just be young folk care, older folks don't. Older folks care, young folks don't. But I don't know that it's the age of the victims as it is the age right. of these problems, because the age of these exactly. problems goes all the way back. We got pictures of Malcolm X. Somebody right. sent me pictures of Malcolm exactly. X on well, first Twitter. First of all, you mentioned, Doing, a, you, uh, you mentioned the Selma march. It was a, it was a young African American, uh, uh, Jimmy Lee. Uh, well, I can't remember his last name. Well, I can't. Jimmy Lee Jackson, mm -hmm. who was killed, that led to the Selma march. Right. So, right. 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 Not, but I think that we, we we need to we need to understand that we have a little cycle here going. Of something happens, we react. There's a crisis. There's a panel. There's yeah. a speech nothing changes. Exactly. We do that over and over right. and over and over again. And I think these young people see that. They see that there's no results and they're getting restless H about here's that. Here's what the young people in Ferguson are saying. Is that it's our time in the ring. We need the elders to be our corner man. It tell us Are how they to that? yes. Didn't they boo uh, Cornell Brooks off the stage? No, after he was finished, they demanded in an interfaith forum how it is that you come into Ferguson, you have a panel of interfaith leaders from around the country without any real representation of the young people right. who have been sustaining the movement. What has got to be very critical is you have to come into the march to be a part of it, not to lead it. This is something that they're doing in Ferguson. And so if, in fact, you're giving some insight, some advice, but you can't come in and say, oh, right. well, I'm here now and I'm the sheriff with the white hat. What right. they're looking for is if, in fact, we're going to do a partnership, then teach us from the corner how to fight. But don't get in the ring and take right. over our fight if we're already in here swinging. But it's all of our fights. It's not just a millennial fight. It's not just a civil rights movement fight. I mean, when we talk about people in their 60s and 70s now, they were teenagers witnessing other teenagers That's be right. killed in the 50s and 60s. So this is not a new problem for some of our older leaders, but it's not the time to say, well, this is our fight, that was y'all's fight. This is, this is everyone's. But whenever there's a revolution globally, whether you deal with what's going on in Hong Kong, what's happening, happen in the Middle East, even in Africa, it's always led by young people. Exactly. But young people cannot wait for somebody to pass the baton. Right. I mean, well, but they're, they're not waiting. They're, 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 they're going to have, they're gonna have to. But, but here's the other piece I think is important. And again, you, we, we use history as a guide. If we know it. Rosa, Rosa Parks was 42 years old when she sat down. Dr. King was 25 when they elected him to be the leader of the Montgomery Improvement Association. 42 and 25. Folks still you know, in the game. And I had some folks who were calling that they were saying, well, you know, uh, you know, we want this person involved, but you shouldn't be involved. Here's the deal. Folks getting arrested, you're going to need somebody with resources to help bail some folks out. I'll be you, a you, you, you're going to need that. <laughs> uh, you, 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 you're going to need uh, individuals who have organizational infrastructure. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's a huge mistake when anyone assumes that it's not all hands on deck. But the it's problem all is, though, and, and, I, and I think she touched on it, is that the caring about black people and using these these lines of Black Life Matters starts and stops, starts and stops, starts and stops. There's never a perpetual movement until the problem is solved. So what happens is that there's a credibility problem. It's like we heard you back when Amadou, we heard you back when Sean Bell, right. we heard you right. back when Trayvon Martin, and there's new bodies that have piled up since. Well, exactly what are you right. gonna do to prevent has, the nothing, body pile up? And, but, but, and the old leadership has to answer to that to some extent but, 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 because but, but, they haven't changed the game enough but, but so these the deal, problems though, aren't but, dealt with. But here's the deal though, okay? And we have to be honest about in terms of how all this is interrelated. Mm -hmm. If you're talking about how do you change bodies being piled up, that also has a direct result on who is leading police departments. Who is also changing public policy within police departments, is. which, which also is. is impacted by the people who hire the police chief, who is the mayor and the city council or the city manager, right. which is also impacted by who hires the mayor and the city council and the folks who actually vote. Well, and so, we've, had, and, and we've had black cities with black mayors with black police chiefs and still had these problems. No, 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 I, I, so, I, I understand that. But what, is, but what I'm saying we, is, I don't believe a civil rights leader can somehow change a department policy unless you begin to change the people who are leading police departments to change public policy. That's well, where I think what's noble, Noble's responsibility, right. National Organization of Black Law Enforcement right. Officials, engaging them as well to provide leadership in well, this. Well, we can't, you're right about that, but the point is we have had black leadership in charge of these things before and they still haven't changed. So something is systematically wrong That's with regard right. to the pressure that we put on specific the, issues but there, but to a make lot, change. But there's a lot of stuff that is not changing and stuff that is still saying the same. As you guys touched on, I think, on an earlier show,
about the voter registration forms in Georgia. 55,000 of them mysteriously disappeared. Right. Similar problem happening in Ferguson. So how are we supposed to continue to get these young people to, to stay engaged when the system itself Corrupt. is excluding us despite the fact I, I that we're playing we by the do, rules? We have to do both and a few blocks right from the studio. Dr. King gave the I Have a Dream speech. It was great, powerful, one of the best speeches America's ever heard. But connected to that had to be the work of Thurgood Marshall. That you have to in fact pass some laws that will in fact substantiate the speeches. What has to happen for us at this point, after the demonstrations, after we disrupt Monday Night Football, what are we going to do really about oversight in, po in police departments? Where are body cameras? Where are we with civilian review boards? We can't just deal with black mayors. Jeremiah Rice said, everybody who's your color is not your kind. So we've got to have a different level of accountability and, on where it is that we are. And what has to happen is accept the reality that this has to be sustained, not, sustained. not 60 days. No. Not because, understand, August 28th, 1955, Emmett Till was killed. That's right. You go through the Montgomery Bus Boycott 381 days. You then go to Voting Rights Act, Civil Rights Act, I have March on Washington for yes. Jobs and Freedom, Poor People's Campaign, Fair Housing Act, go through all that. It was 13 years between Emmett Till's death in 68 when King was killed and what took place. That's 13 years. Right. And so the challenge for people is, <laughs> right. you gonna be in this fight? Right. This ain't gonna be a six month, K one year, two year thing. No, K I wanna make an, an announcement to all of black America. It's late breaking. In case they have not gotten the news, we have midterm elections coming up. <laughs> And no, really, and I think that we're almost in a coma, and somebody has to shake us and say, you can't just wait. It's three weeks you, from today. It's right. three weeks from today. You cannot wait just for the presidential election. If, in fact, this is a real movement, let's get in there to see what we're going to do about the Senate, the Congress, the local state legislators, and an in mass voter registration drive. We've well, got to be a part of it. And But there's got to be an issue behind it, exactly. not just and, symbolism. And the fact and when there's no issue behind it, that's when you get oh, the Oh, there's problem. an issue. There's several issues. <laughs> but, here's, but here's the other piece that it has to be there. I'm, I'm way over time. Is this. You vote. The election is three weeks from today. November 4th. But on November 5th, you got to go to work to hold the very folks you voted for accountable. Absolutely. You can't just show up to vote, then disappear. And it's also that's part of the deal. You got to keep that whole thing going. And of course, we're going to keep the conversation going on this show as we're absolutely committed to it. Pastor Brown, thank you so very much. Thank you. Uh, and Lauren, Cleo, and Kim, thanks a bunch as well. Folks, are you using your power as a conscious consumer? We'll tell you how to speak with your dollars. Plus, liberals love it, conservatives hate it. Well, some liberals hate it as well. We'll deal with common core educational standards, all of that on News One Now on TV One.